The Cat Who Was the President of Us Eight Years, a fairy tale that guarantees you laughing tears. So many thought they'd never see the day when, in the land of slavery and email, the populace would choose a different way and elect a president who had a tail. The cat I speak of had a silver tongue and an intellect unmatched by primate brain, though in cat years he was rather young to take the oath of office and to reign. Not everyone's a cat lover at heart, and freedom gives to every man a voice to argue. Say, a dog would be more smart. Let's have a shaggy dog. That is my choice. And yet, we had a cat as president. It's time to look back now at how that went. Inauguration. Two million people gathered on the National Mall in optimism that they now had seen it all. All hatred, bitterness, and rage was history. And though the winter wind was plenty blistery, all hearts were warmed with satisfaction that their land had finally tabbed a feline to assume command. With right paw raised, the cat then made this solemn vow. The president said, Meow. The people now. A savior come in feline form to build for us a temple dorm. His father was a Siamese. He'll sell us out to the Chinese. An answer to our godless prayers, a president who says he cares. In Egypt, cats were lionized. Our homeland will be Muslimized. I see in store a golden age of unity, not petty rage. The black ones are such awful luck. He'll grow the debt, then pass the buck. At least he's neither tabby nor here suit. Those things are monsters, gremlins, and not cute. With nothing to be done, at least for now, the president said, Meow. Healthcare. The president had promised on a campaign stop that hospital and doctor bills would have to drop. A plan was made to talk about a minor change that might keep health care costs in European range. But cable news preempted any sane debate by pitting eager enemies in idiot hate. Attempting to explain his aims to the lowbrow, the president said, Meow. The people now. If we just tweak the payment scheme, we'll live in a Norwegian dream. I've never heard such tyranny. Quite soon we'll all be dead, you'll see. I slipped and fell and then woke up to find that I'd become bankrupt. These Marxist schemes are not for you. The market knows just what to do. My three-year-old was turned away because his mother could not pay. Americans must all be free to die if uninsured they be. How can a single week in ICU cost more than all my annual labors do? Content to take what dealing would allow? The president said, meow. Taxes. With health reform laws watered down as snake oil cures, the president gave hints that all should rest assured that in the future, rates of tax might have to rise on earners taking home half of the market's prize. But cable news increased its nightly rating score, broadcasting an apocalypse of class-based war. Again, to get his aims across to the lowbrow, the president said, Meow. The people now. Let's all pay in what's fair to share and build communities that care. Economists are all agreed. The greater good is served by greed. Let's tax the rich, but leave me be. I have to raise a family. It's reparations, stealing means, to give them to those welfare queens. The one percent's alone to blame for all my poverty and pain. Back when I was on EBT, nobody helped me out, you see. In tax I pay less than a common clerk. That lobby firm I hired has done its work. With midterms to contest God knew not how, the president said, Meow. Foreign policy. 
no bill of his could ever through committee get. The legislative process functioned like a net, to filter out all clauses that might work against constituents' grassroots corporate lobbied interests. The midterms were not kind, but now? Oh, sordid boon. Some Arab civil war's blood made the nation swoon. Just drop some bombs, make peace, sell guns, and boost the Dow. The president said, Meow. The people now. We must drop bombs to save these folks, the victims of acts unprovoked. We must invade this power void, lest Israel end up destroyed. Imperialists must not invade another market for free trade. The nation is too tired of war. We've seen this movie played before. The price of gasoline has risen. Let's throw the profiteers in prison. Snafu? Fubar! Quagmires of muck! This dithering has left us stuck. Come war, come peace, oh hell, I'm so confused by politics and life. Which side to choose? A line was drawn in red. The nation's vow? The promise to do? Meow. Re-election. The pundits all foresaw a drop-down, drag-out fight for re-election as the Maulers' fading light was evident from poll scores, public sentiment, that would not count the failed war an accomplishment. Against a faceless blob, the cat seemed all but beat, but flesh-and-blood polls stuffed their mouths with feet. The cat turned possum, ran the race with stoic dow. The incumbent peeped, but meow his opponent now. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that 47% of all men are created takers, that they are endowed by their creator, Yahweh, with certain inalienable rights, that these consist solely of the right to birth, liberty from increases in the tax on capital gains and carried interest, and the right to bear arms. To stay atop the ship of state's proud prow, repeat the soundbite, meow, scandal. A second landslide mandate in the bag, a win, was cause for lame duck silly season to begin. But as the scandal mongers combed the past for filth, for closet bodies, closet love, corruption's pilf, they couldn't find a thing to make impeachment bite. And so, on birth certificates, they raised the fight. The president's not one of us, these dogs avowed. The president said, meow, the people now. This anti-feline bias is, you wouldn't ask a dog for his. I'd like to see the document, to know he's not from ISIS sent. The media create these shows to drive their ratings, don't you know? I think this thing was photoshopped. You see, the signature is cropped. Let's talk about the economy and solid growth in quarter three. It's Watergate plus Teapot Dome plus Iran Contra, Hitler's clone. This idiot fringe of ours is rather queer, but really, it's so small, it isn't worth our fear. Retreating to the golf course, midst the row, the president said, Meow. Climate change. In one last try to leave a happy legacy, the president resolved himself to climb a tree and stay there till the rules regarding CO2 agreed with Copenhagen norms on what to do. He earmarked funds to help build greener industries and touted solar and wind-powered factories. Until all honored science, he would prowl his bow. The tree hugger said, Meow. The people now. The causal nexus ain't complex. Burn CO2? We know what's next. The planet's warming? What a farce. It snowed in Idaho last March. If we just set up cap and trade, the green transition's good as made. The market is the guarantor of life and limb and coastal shore. 400 parts per million are good reason not to drive your car. 
Chinese polluters have to change before I bring my gas in range. I think it's time to work to find new ways to cope with acid seas and hotter days. With all apologies to poor Palau, the president said, Meow. Ex-presidency, borrowed from Jimmy Carter. Eight years had passed as surely as the last had passed. A lecture tour was booked, but cheers were most half-assed. Cat's memoirs garnered praise, though sales were weak. And the leper, star burnt out, went off to help the meek. Good works in South Sudan had made Cat's critics squirm, though he was criticized for killing guinea worm. Obscure years passed until one fateful, final meow. Then all to Cat kowtow. The people now. We've lost a great American. His like will not be seen again. Our lives were so much simpler then. Oh, for the days when cats were men. He had a vision for our land, which none of us could understand. Our current president? He sucks. Let's have more cats, not lame ducks. I'm deeply grieved by his fall, the noblest Yankee of us all. A Washington, a Roosevelt, his impact shall be ever felt. Historians and scamps all love this joke. I'd rank him right with Grant and James K. Polk. The end of an era.